Welcome to the Digging Deeper Podcast, brought to you by New Hope Church. My name is Matt, and I'm so excited to dive into today's topic. But before we get there, let's go around the room and see how everybody's doing. J-Boy, how you doing today? You always start with Jay. <laughs> I, do. I don't know. There. He's just on this side of me. He's the right of me. <laughs> oh, I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Uh, I feel like our family has caught a bit of a stride now as far as homeschool is, so it's much calmer there, and I think the kids are starting to get a feel for it. I don't know if they love it, but they're they're getting a feel for it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I was kind of pretty thankful that it snowed so that the kids could have a ton of fun yesterday mm-hmm. in the backyard. Mm-hmm. So, which was great. But yeah, doing good. Awesome. Doing good. Good man. Glad to hear it. Lindy, how you doing? I'm great. We had the best day yesterday in the snow. Went oh, tobogganing gosh. and it was so fun. Had we stayed there a long time, my my child ate probably half of the snow <laughs> that Canada got. <laughs> Not That's the yellow just, snow. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I told her that. I'm very wise. Good mom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, awesome. Yeah, awesome day. Great, great week. Um, yeah, just happy. Good. Awesome. Toby, how you doing? I'm good. Yeah? Yeah. That Same. sounds qualified. I got that to... That sound qualified. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to unpack that statement? I got to throw uh, the Indian corn with snowballs, so... Nice. <laughs> nice. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> and also some random kids that ran past me. That's, so that's, that's right. all. That's right. <laughs> hey, man, they crossed you. That's on them. That's on them. <laughs> well, in my defense, they started it. That's fair. But, uh, yeah, we're good enjoying the snow, which I know not everybody likes to hear but we are enjoying it as we haven't had a lot of it ever so yeah. uh, that's good <laughs> um and yeah otherwise excited about church and mm. things going on and uh sat yesterday trying to figure out services for the r- r- next three months and you go well we might open up <laughs> yeah, so you know it's uh, it was interesting but yeah it's all good cool excited. awesome nate how you doing buddy great great i am great yeah it's uh i, I have to admit the Every text message I get from someone saying, yeah, I want to get baptized. <laughs> uh, and now I think we're at six or something for this mm. upcoming baptism. Uh, it just, uh, it reminds me that God's working like crazy in mm-hmm. the season. And I think there's a song, you know, like, even when I don't see it, yeah. you're working. And uh, that just, uh, yeah, it's been a, something that's been on my heart lately. Just every time I get the text message, I go, man, he's at work. And mm. so I, you know, open my eyes to what you're doing, God, and I want to be a part of it. So that's been, that's been really cool. Yeah, the kids, you know. I, my wife is a superhero. <laughs> I don't know how she's doing the homeschooling with the newborn. And uh, yeah, we're, we're making it through, but we're certainly hopeful to some sort of end. Truth. I don't know how long you hold on to that hope, but we're hopeful to some sort of end for our kids to uh, be back in school at least and mm-hmm. maybe a little bit of build some friendships again you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> outside of their, the home. So, yeah. Absolutely. Tom, how you doing? I'm fantastic. I'm glad to hear it. Today marks two weeks since a bunch of people were all breathing their COVID all over me, and I re- I, I rebuked it in Jesus' name, and um, <laughs> here I am, healthy, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. thank the Lord. No, I'm, I'm doing great, and um, crazy thing is, tonight is our annual budget night, mm-hmm. and uh, when you start a church in the living room with your two best friends, and um, tonight we're looking at a, a crazy budget mm-hmm. that that is all in the black. And for those of you who aren't accountingly savvy, that means it's all good. Mm-hmm. And uh, what a thrill to brag on the Lord tonight, to boast in His faithfulness, Amen. And somewhat in our our penny pinching, cheap church that <laughs> builds an entire church out of popsicle sticks and duct tape, tries to make every ministry work without spending a dime if they possibly can, except Toby. And, uh, <laughs> and you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> excited it's about a, a funny healthy... funny because it's true. <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> excited about a healthy uh, budget line for um, mm. taking our online services up. Yeah, uh, to the best we that. can. You, you often can't see the drummer, and different <laughs> people are, are hidden, and uh, we just w- really want to uh, get the gospel out mm-hmm. the best we possibly can. So we're excited about all that. It's going to be a great night. Mm, absolutely. That's good. Uh, we're doing pretty good. Uh, I think we're in that boat of, I feel like every week we have to refigure out homeschooling stuff with the kids, which is always an adventure. Um, but otherwise doing really well. Yeah. So excited for the season, excited to see what God's doing. I've really enjoyed us, um, all the content we've been pushing out as a church mm-hmm. over this month. It's been a lot of fun. Um, That's great. Yeah, it's been, it's been really good. Well, you've done you're a wonderful great, job. Yeah, you're oh, doing no, a great job, Matt. It's been, it's been exciting yeah. to... <laughs> 
Especially this... Lindy's video. Oh, that, that was, was good. Yeah, yeah, that, that was one is good. the best. Yeah, I'm just saying. Let me take yeah, it. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. But no, it's been it's been really neat because I think um, you know when people feel so isolated right now, the fact that there's still avenues we can there's always avenues you can take to connect with people. I think is is the takeaway for me right now is that it doesn't the situation doesn't matter. There's always ways to connect, and I think we need to be grateful for that. Um, and I'm just super grateful for that right now. So Matt, your team of editors for like especially for kids church. Oh, they're amazing. Yeah, incredible. So, Who are they? So that's uh, that's uh, Sarah Cook and uh, Dylan Bryan. They're just crazy. Yeah, absolutely, it's so well done. Right you guys now. do such a job. The most amazing thing to me in that a, a is their willingness. I mean, it's a lot of work. They put in probably ten hours a week on that. Uh, but what wow. what is even more amazing is before they started doing kids ministry edits, they'd never touched an editor before. And they're volunteers. Uh, they are, 100%. Uh, wow. Yeah, and they just do phenomenal work. So yeah, shout do. out to those guys because they're giving a lot of time. So, cool. so um, anyway, yeah, so it's good. It's very good. Uh, Nate, I thoroughly enjoyed your message on Sunday. And I wanted to, I wanted to spend some time kind of unpacking it a little bit because there's some really powerful things that you said in there. And uh, I think it's worth analyzing a little further. You made a, you made a statement. I really liked it. And uh, it was a quote. I can't remember who it was a quote from, so I don't know if you remember off the top of your head, but I'll, I'll give it to you and then you can tell me. But it says, our memory anchors us to the past, yeah, interprets the present, and charts our course for the future. Um, man, that's quite a statement. That's a good quote. Yeah. I, th- I, went, like, I, I went back and listened to it a couple times, and I'm going, wow, there's so much here. Um, and I think we've, we've practically seen that played out in the way even we've, as a church, tried to navigate um, you know, the, the COVID crisis and everything that's going on. But the question I want to throw at you guys in that context is how has remembering what God has done helped you, helped us uh, through some of these current crises we've faced as a culture during the pandemic, both as a church and just individually as well? Um, Nate, maybe you start us out on that a little bit. Yeah, I think I shared this uh, on Christmas Eve or right around there. And one of my benedictions is like, you know, going into a second lockdown was um, frustrating, but not scary. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's maybe sums up a lot of our emotions in <laughs> yeah. this. Like that was a rant you did at the end. There of was that a story. rant. It was amazing. Yeah, it's frustrating, but it's not scary because we saw what God did last time. Like it's yep. so beautiful to yep. look back and go, like, okay, if that's what God did last time, then like let's get ourselves ready for what God's about to do this time. Like, mm-hmm. um, I don't want to be, uh, I want to be in lockstep with what God's gonna do this yeah. year, and I don't want to be kind of going like. Yo, last year I felt wide eyed and like I like I just went like God's big and what's he doing and oh my gosh I got like yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. cool but I really hope this year I just go like okay no that doesn't surprise me like yeah of course you know 150 people have joined church and we go to four <laughs> services that makes sense um, and so I I think you know a little bit uh, our even you know PT mentions budget like last in the past we've been like oh we set this budget this is a reasonable growth and mm. God is consistently. <laughs> blown us away with what he's done and mm. uh, the faithfulness of our church and bringing people here that we went like, well, that's that, well, that was a conservative estimate, but, but <laughs> yeah. you know, our God's not like that. He yeah. does something, uh, his own way. And so I would just say, you know, it anchors us, it, it, it charts a course for the future and has been maybe the part of that quote that I've been resting in and going mm-hmm. like, okay, so out of what I've seen God do, yeah, what does this mean for me this year? Actually, what does it mean to be honest, for, for my family? Like mm-hmm. that's been the big one is for Alex and I, what does this look like for this year? Yeah. And so, um, yeah, that's that's kind of probably where I'd rest in that quote these days. Mm-hmm. No, I like it absolutely. Jay Boy, you got any thoughts on this? Yeah, I think how is remembering what God's done in the help in the past helped you through this? I think you know, as we were missionaries for seven to ten years, there was definitely like times where things were scarce. Mm-hmm. You know, whether that <laughs> yeah. was finances, whether that was. Um, you know, un- very unsure about what our, the next step would be and, yeah. and feeling like a black hole. Like you look forward and you're like, God, we need to make a decision about this because we have no idea like where we're going to live or how we're going to provide for ourselves. And it's just, it was just a huge leap of faith. And so, and then we're living through that and seeing God provide in all, all, always miraculous or surprising ways mm-hmm. helps, I think helps us as we walk in a crazy, like, like, how how long are our kids going to be at home? How how much do we have to do this? And is the is the are we still going to pay our bills if we're not working? Like many people still aren't working. Mm-hmm. So I think relying on the past, right? Like remembering is so crucial, and we're actually remembering rightly. How you remember matters mm-hmm. 
you know, remembering what the things that God did and how he cared for us um, continues to push, push me forward mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, um, I think personally, when I think about um, just recently uh, our lives and the fact that we we moved from South Africa <clears throat> to Canada, um, I think it's really good to remind ourselves, like whenever I feel like I want to, it drives me nuts that we can't fly anywhere and that family can't fly, that, that that's the biggest thing for us at this moment, um, to remind myself that if we were in South Africa, we would have probably had to live with our parents because <laughs> mm -hmm. if i we have so many friends in the entertainment industry <laughs> be inverted, please get me away. <laughs> <laughs> we can't fly yes, away it been, please take us away from here <laughs> <laughs> but uh <laughs> but yeah uh, looking back at that thinking of where we would have been I, i mean sure they would have been we we were part of a church and everything but um i i know for a fact that we knew that that's not where we were meant to be and we weren't mm -hmm. able to to really um use what we had fully um and uh just looking back at at what god brought us to and where we would have been if we were still in that situation um is an amazing reminder for me whenever i feel like i want to go crazy and be upset about the situation now with covid i go wow but god's taken us out of something and we would have we would have really struggled um so just what he's done, uh, I keep reminding myself, yeah, of what he's done for us. And then um, I feel like God goes, well, you know, what do you want me to do? <laughs> I took you out of this. And this was the way for you to like, so, so yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. God has a plan and, mm -hmm. and, and his plan is amazing. And we just need to remind ourselves of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, if you've listened to the podcast before, I keep always saying like, looking back is such a um, uh, important spiritual gift uh, for me um, and what I always find is like whenever you're going through something bad you always go man this is terrible and w why lord and whatever you know the the human emotions mm -hmm. we get um, and so many times like I mean we've we've been through a few a few things and like really hard stuff losing businesses and you know all the the bad stuff and then when you look back you go all right all right god God had a plan with this. Like, if this didn't happen, that wouldn't happen. And he mm -hmm. is in control and he is sovereign. So that kind of now whenever we go through something hard, we go, okay, let's just bunker down, trust God, praise him for the victory and know that whatever's going to come out, even if it isn't what we were thinking mm -hmm. is going to come out, whatever God has got planned for this is going to be good. And mm -hmm. uh, he is in control of everything. Mm, yeah. Absolutely. PT. Yeah, so... Um, for me, when you ask that question, I, I think of, um, you know, we, we started a couple of churches from very little. The first time, you, you know, it was, it succeeded. And I was like, was that fluke and luck? Like, <laughs> <laughs> because it's puzzling that God could use me to, mm. to do something. And, um, so, you know, you have one win under your belt and you go, but it's not going to happen again. Right. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so when, when that was over, the idea of planting another church with even fewer people the mm -hmm. next time around. So, you know, you got the track record of all the heroes in the Bible, but now if you live long enough, you get your own personal track record. <laughs> so when COVID hit and one of my colleagues called me and he was panicked and freaking out because his, his online numbers dove after a few weeks to, to you know, a, a major hit down. And I just told him, like, when this happened, I was like, okay, well, when we open back up again. If it's a handful of people, we know what to do. Mm -hmm. We've done it before with a handful of people, and we'll do it again. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, just trusting the, the faithfulness of God in the past and getting over that, yes, he actually does like to use, you know, woefully inadequate, sinful people to do his work, of which I qualify in spades for that, you know, <laughs> uh, is, is great. And so, and the, so then you go, okay, um, that's that. So what are you up to, Lord? Like to talk about the future. Mm -hmm. We don't know quite what you're doing in the present. We know you're good. And you're not, you're not toying with us. So now it's like, Ooh, mm -hmm. I wonder what God could be up to mm -hmm. and to fantasize a bit about what cool things he's got planned for us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I like that idea. You've talked a little bit about that before with this idea of like you put, we we can be exceptionally creative with worry and stress. Yeah, right. <laughs> but when you take all of that energy and actually put it towards what could God do, right? I mean, it gets pretty exciting pretty quick. Yeah. So it's, yeah, that's such a, a great So now idea. that's what we're going to do about Easter. Mm -hmm. We're going to plan three Easter 
possible services. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe. Yeah. Lockdown, <laughs> drive in, 30%, who knows yeah. what. Yeah, 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 absolutely. No, it's good. <laughs> Um, I, I think one of the, the important parts of remembering uh, what God has done and what he's doing is, is to have like, good practices in place for remembering. Um, because we do easily forget, like your Dr. Who quote, which warmed my heart. Um, but, uh, <laughs> that, that you shared with me. <laughs> that yeah. I shared with you. Yeah. I was just excited you actually well, used it. We do take requests. Yeah, no, he, and, and man, he went for it. It was great. I loved it. Uh, but uh, no, it was, it was, you know, it's so good because we do so easily forget um what God has done. And so what are some of the practical tools that you guys have used? So one of the practical ways that I uh try and 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 remember what what God's up to is journaling. Mm-hmm. And I don't do it like a slavishly, you know? Mm-hmm. But um man, after 2020, I think I'm going to spend a lot of time this year journaling what happened. Yeah. Cuz it, it's all so big and so historic. And it just, you just can't, you can't get your head around it all. Mm-hmm. So for me, uh, journaling has been a helpful tool and uh, I plan on doing a significant amount of that in this new year, uh, trying to sort out what's been happening, what's been going on in our culture, in our world and inside of me and in our church, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. I like it. Yeah. It's interesting. Uh, in the old Testament, every time God did something, he tells them to like build an altar or put up these stones and yeah. it's always something physical. And, you know, I think as human beings, we, we spaces and, and, and physical things help us to remember stuff. I don't know. Every time I drive by uh, my old high school, like I have a flood of memories that just mm. p- p- pound into my mind. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I, th- something that's been helpful for me and I think that is, as a good idea, a good practice is to create monuments, you know, put, put a picture on the wall or create something that, that's like, I put this here because it reminds me of when God did A, B, or C. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's a physical thing. You can't, you can't miss it. It's always there, always reminding you. Mm-hmm. It could so be a I should buy myself something nice? <laughs> yes, yeah, like this that, new Dave. dress I'll I really always like remember it. God when this I'm surprised you would think of that that's <laughs> hilarious no but it, I think it's very helpful because you, you then you can't miss it it's there it's staring you in the face I mean, mm-hmm. maybe it's even a scripture mm-hmm. and you just you put that scripture on the wall or something right yeah yeah, yeah. no that's a great one yeah, yeah I think it's very important we had a conversation with um uh, close friends of ours in the church who had a, an amazing breakthrough that they were praying for and God just came through for them like that yeah and I said to them, like, remember this, write it down or do something to make yourself remember this, because this is something that is so amazing, but can so easily just be um, uh, construed as luck. Just mm-hmm. go, OK, fluke and luck, you know, um, which is just it, it's so amazing. God really came through for them. And uh, I think it's really important that it's not so little, but sometimes it, bec- it can become a little thing that we just go, oh, this is amazing. OK. And we move on and we just get on with our lives and we forget about this amazing thing that God just did for us and without even having to wait for it or mm-hmm. like spend so much time in prayer for it, just the breakthrough that God gave them immediately. Um, so yeah, uh, just with all of you, like writing it down, journaling or whatever you need to do to remember those um, moments because um, that can really strengthen you when times are tough and you can remind yourself of the things that God's done for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it, al- it almost seems like the hurtful bad things we remember clearer mm. and we hold on to much tighter. And then God does these incredible miracles and we write them off and, 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 and don't hold on to those. Mm. That's probably a dumb thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> Theologically speaking. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Dumb. Yeah. Um, and what I, what I think is really good is to really use that, what God has given you. You know, if you mm-hmm. think about the story of the talents, like, if God does something, you don't go and bury it and forget about it. Use it and use it for his kingdom yeah. and multiply it. Yeah. Um, and I, I always, I, I just love um, Genesis 1 out of the Amplified Bible. After everything God made, he said he, he affirmed and he sustained it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, that always just comes back to me. Like, if God gives you something, affirm and sustain it. You have to keep working at it. If he gives you a talent, yeah. whatever it is, work at it, sustain it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's good. Well, <clears throat> I um I think all of these are great. Uh, one of the things that uh, I always find interesting is you know the early church when they couldn't actually read, they would just share their conversion stories over mm-hmm. and over again. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually think that that's one that is helpful for me. I, I think of the miracles that happened last year and some of the the best way of 
remembering and celebrating those is when I get back together with, you know, what it, when I sit back with Jay at lunch, Jay ends and reminisce over the miracle that we watched happen. Mm-hmm. Um, it almost comes more alive than if I just sat and remembered it myself because mm. I get to see his emotion. I get yeah. to reminisce of yeah. this part and I kind of forgot about that part and you did, you know, this. And so um, sometimes I think, you know, that, that happens when you hear someone's testimony. I know Brendan uh, Barrett dug up his old testimony from when he got baptized however many years ago in, in at Jordan Public School when our church was there and sent it to me and you listen to it and like, wow, like I forgot that piece or I forgot. Yeah. Like, yep. and so retelling the story, I think for me is always a big one, um, whether it's just with your friends or your spouse or um, whatever, but getting together and actually sharing that story again. Uh, mm-hmm. That's why in life group often we'll just get, you know, ask a question, like share what that was like, you know, and share what, what yeah. that was, share how you came to Christ. And um, it's actually super powerful. Same reason baptism testimonies, mm. like it doesn't matter. It could be a 13 year old, you know, young girl and she shares her story and you go, yeah, that, that I needed to hear that, you know, yeah, like yeah. it's a beautiful thing. So I find retelling the story to be a big one for me. Yeah. Well, I, and I think, I think culturally, like that's one of those things that transcends culture and storytelling, mm. right? Like it's relevant in every culture yeah. is storytelling and there's a lot of power and in, in it. Um, and I know for myself, that's the big one is telling. Well, that's how Jesus, yeah. Jesus taught. That yeah, way, absolutely. Yeah, so well, not only, not only that, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> not, yeah, not only that revelation says very clearly how you triumph over the enemy, mm-hmm. right? You triumph over the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. Yeah. Right. Truth. And so I love that, Nate. I love that you said that. Uh, and so I think for people listening, like when, when you have God do something in your life, act in your life, like start telling it. Mm-hmm. Because it's not just for you, it's for everyone. It's for the whole yeah. body, the building up of the whole body. Yeah. Uh, and so tell it and tell it and tell it and tell it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that brings up actually the next thing I want to talk about, because you had, uh, Nate, you mentioned the idea of a paradox. It felt like a paradox in yeah. Scripture almost. Yeah. Uh, I think your quote Contradiction. was... Contradiction. Yeah, almost. Yeah, exactly, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, Jesus, quick to God jump on that wrong. this morning. He made a mistake. Aha! <laughs> <That's right. laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Finally, I caught him. That's caught him. right. That's right. But no, in your Just kidding, in your, Lord, don't spite me. <laughs> in your uh, in your message, you had said, um, you know, in Isaiah, he said uh, he tells us to remember for the first thirteen verses <laughs> that comes in with the forget the former yeah, things. Forget yeah. about it. Yeah, just, you know, forget remember, 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 it. but you know, just forget about it. Um, <laughs> can you just elaborate a little yeah. bit more on that? Uh, yeah, and I, I think it's actually really important because this is. Uh, maybe where we get so stuck as as christians in mm. rituals and in the the process we have to do it the same way to recreate our our, our experience with god you know yeah, yeah. and so you know the, the the first 13 verses are showing us who god is and reminding us of his character yeah. and i think that's when we remember we we don't remember the miracle as in like oh that miracle happened last year because i did this 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 and this <laughs> then the miracle happened <laughs> yeah. and we do get there Yo, we do start to think that's 100%. how it happened because we all got gathered around and worshiped and declared the victory it happened mm-hmm. and we go like no 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 it's because of who god is that mm-hmm. it happened and yeah. so he's reminding us first of who he is and then trying to bring us back to like so be excited for what's next yeah. while you journey it with me in my spirit and um i think man, do, do we ever get caught in like, if to have you know, experience with Christ, it must be with a fog machine and, and <laughs> lasers on the stage, right? You're not Toby, lying. Lindy, yeah. <laughs> it, we, but no, we do, we do think we have to recreate that. And that's, I, I think that's, it's not, it's not bad to encounter Christ at camp and go mm. like, that's where I had a mountaintop high in my, in my faith because I had no distractions yeah. and I just got to experience God. That's not bad. But it doesn't mean you have to go there to recreate your only encounter with Christ each time. Um, and so I think that's kind of the messaging that I pulled away from it for personally is going like, no, how, how is God going to show up today? Yeah. Let's just get in tune with that and be excited about that instead yeah. of trying to recreate something in the past that that's the, only, that's the, the box I put God in, mm-hmm. if that makes more sense. No, it does. Absolutely. Yeah. A couple of things that that also made me think about is, you know, we love to obsess over the past. Mm-hmm. past hurt past victory even mm. and it's like you know as we as we as we that's like nate said perfectly there like when you have this great experience with god you want to recreate that but then you also have times where you did something stupid mm-hmm. or someone hurt you or you got stuck in in, in some habit and and you can't move forward because you're so stuck in the past hurt you're so stuck in what happened that you can't move forward mm-hmm. and so i think that's also part of this you know israel potentially could be in exile when they're reading this and and thinking 
God has forgotten them or yeah. thinking that, yeah. well, we're too sinful to ever be used again. And God's like, no, 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 no. Remember who I was, what mm-hmm. I am like, my character. Mm-hmm. Forget about what happened. We're, we're doing a new thing. And so it's like, you know, let go of your past hurt mm-hmm. and focus not on how crappy you were, but how good God was. And I think that's another layer, another layer to this as well. Sure. That's mm-hmm. a good, that's a good word. When I, I, I hope to never have another stress leave ever again, because I hope to be a better uh, uh, follower of Jesus and take care of my soul. But during a stress leave years back, I spent three months in the basement crying, uh, building furniture, and listening over and over again to to you two, uh, stuck in a moment and can't get out of it, and just going like, I'm not going to get stuck in this moment. Uh, you know, I'm not going to do that. Lord, get me out of this somehow. Don't let leave me stuck here. Mm. And of course, He's faithful and does that. Mm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I think a lot of people get also like the the saying the good old days. I've seen that so many times. Yeah. Just, oh, yeah. that was the yeah. good old days, you know. Uh, I've seen it with a lot of people who immigrated just going, "Oh, those were the good old days." And mm. when we forget <laughs> that yeah. you know, God is here and he's doing something now and yeah. it's like Jay said, mm-hmm. God's doing something new and we have to be aware of that that, that this could be the good old days. <laughs> 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 uh, Andy like, Bernard in the office actually says, "I wish we knew we were living the good old days <laughs> right. and we were in the good old days." So you're 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 Sing it, Carly Simon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> these are the good old days. No. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think uh the last question I want to leave you guys with, and this is kind of a practical one, even for us as a church going to 2021, is, you know, how do we, how do we guard against getting stuck, or I think you use the word hunkered down, <laughs> um, in, in the way we do things, but instead be open and willing and trusting that, you know, for whatever new thing God is doing, because he is doing a new thing. We, we see that. But how, how are we going to navigate that? What is that going to look like as a, as a church, as followers of Christ? Yeah, I guess two quick ones. One is uh, we need to be more in tune with the Holy Spirit. So if we're not spending time in prayer and mm-hmm. spending time quietly listening to what God's saying, then we're just going to keep driving our agenda. And mm-hmm. so that's uh, that's where we run the risk of pushing forward what we think is best. And the second, I, I would say, and this is a lesson that I'm still work learning, is trying to hold things looser, mm-hmm. to enjoy the adventure of life with God, yeah. and to not try to control and hold on and think that if I don't, it won't, you know, mm-hmm. those sort of things. Yeah, yeah. Um, if we hold it looser and open to what God wants to do, we actually get, it's much f- more free, <laughs> freeing, actually. We, we, we think that's scarier because then we're like, oh, what could happen? But that's actually more freeing. And uh, mm-hmm. so I'd say being more in tune with the Holy Spirit and actually listening to what God's saying and then holding it looser um, allows us to go, okay, God, you want to do this now? Yeah, yeah. cool. Let's yeah. go. Four services. Um, and I think, you know, I think that last year was a, a good um, litmus test, if you will, for our, our leadership, at least, to go like mid-service. We looked around and said, it's full. We're going to three services. Yes. We all agreed via text. <laughs> I got up on stage and <laughs> with Jay and PT, and we said, that we're going to three Sunday. services, right? That happened mid-service. <laughs> yeah. And I think it was just kind of holding it a little loose to go like, hey, if God's doing this, then we must respond, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And that's, uh, I th- I'd like to think that that's how we're going into this year as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's 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 funny because you 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 don't want to get stuck. We've always done it this way. You know, we built New Hope Church by doing this particular mission cycle, mm-hmm. so we're never going to stop doing this mission cycle. You go well, really? Like maybe you, you got to hold it open, right? So mm-hmm. should we keep doing bre- breakfast with Santa? Like how many years is it? Is it's run its course? Is it time for a new thing? And then God comes along with COVID. And we have to change it so much, mm-hmm. and it's 10 million times better. <laughs> so it's like, I guess we're going to keep doing it, but it's a new mm-hmm. thing, and it's mm-hmm. better than ever before. And we would have never made those changes without it. And, and so you, you just got to, as leaders, you, you just got to hold it always open, with open hands and saying, Lord, you know, we're, we don't want to make a golden idol calf out of any of our programs or ministries. Mm-hmm. We're willing to change what needs to be changed. Show us if this is still the most effective way for us to reach people or what kind of change is it a macro change or a micro change. And I think we can trust him to be faithful mm-hmm. to, yeah. to tell us, mm-hmm. show us. Absolutely. Yeah. I think the only thing I'll add there is like you hold on to things that won't change. So the character of God won't change. Amen. The mission won't change. Mm-hmm. So we'll always be leaning in to a God, an insanely uh, loving God who's full of grace and mercy. And, and can do a new thing, can do the impossible through crazies like us. 
and the mission doesn't change. <laughs> but how we do that, yeah. it might change. Yeah. Just yeah. like PT said, like the way in which we do this, it'll probably change. The mm-hmm. way in which we lead this, or the way in which we do that, it, it might change. And so you hold on to what is solid and unchanging and you leave your hands open for the how and the what. No, I, I think that's great. Um, and it's interesting to say that because I've made two observations in my time on staff in relation to this whole concept of moving forward. The first one is that um, we try to be very intentional about not allowing our identity to be wrapped up in the things we do. You know, we, we work really hard to be, you know, we are, we're not about how well this went or how well that went. Like our identity is not there. Um, our identity is in Christ. And, and so we're always constantly turning and looking back to Christ. And that's really important because then every time we do something, we go, okay, did that work? Did that not work? Can we let that go? Can we move, mm-hmm. you know? And, and those two things are really important and they kind of work in tandem to each other. Um, and, and I think even as we go into this season, I already see that of us going, okay, we're going to plan like it all depends on us and then pray because it all depends on God. <laughs> yeah. um, and that's totally. just absolutely incredible. And totally. so those are some observations I've made. Um, that's a good word, man. Moving, uh, you know, moving to 2021. Nathan said on, on Sunday, um, don't, don't, hold, I, I, I don't have your words right down, Pat. Forget all the specific ways that God did things. But remember the character of who God is, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that that was br- I thought that was brilliant. That's yeah. right, because it, 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 God's not going to keep doing things the way He did before. He's far too creative. <laughs> he true. always comes up with a new way of rescuing us, and that freaks us out because <laughs> we know how He rescued us be- before, yeah. and we can't see how that could possibly happen again. Yeah. But He's got a new a new way, right? Truth. But he, remember His faithfulness. Remember His mm-hmm. character. That was that was great. Yeah. And, yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, guys, thank you so much for uh, joining me today and diving into this conversation um, about remembering and forgetting. Um, <laughs> but uh, forgetting to remember. That's right, forgetting remembering. to remember. That's right. Remembering to forget. But forgetting. Well, but, stay tuned for Jay's sermon, which is all about forgetting. <laughs> right. So. That's it. That's it. Yeah. It'll be good. I'm excited. Um, but if you are new and this is your first time listening, uh, thank you so much for joining us. If you're uh, an old timer like us and you've been doing this since day one, thank you so much for uh, continuing to uh, tune every, tune in every week. Uh, if you are new, though, we encourage you to jump on our website, jump on our app, fill out that Connect card. We would love, 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 love to connect with you. Um, we'll talk to you next time on Digging Deeper.